Hello guys, welcome back uh, to the Unacademy Need PD live channel. I am Dr. Himanshu Gupta and I have done my MBBS and MD from Maulana Azad Medical College and I am an educator at Unacademy. So I have been guiding students uh, to help good rank, to help get a good rank in AIMS, PGI and Need PD for the past three years. So here in this session guys, we are going to discuss, we are going to discuss few important spotters in radiology with you, right? So hi guys, how are you doing? How is your preparation going? How is your preparation going? So guys, uh, just uh, say hi if, if my audio and video is clear to you, if my audio and video is clear to you guys. Just drop a hi in the comment section. Is audio fine now? Is is it fine now? Okay, great. Hi, Adnan. Hi, uh, Yamuna. Yamuna, uh, how are you guys? Which year you guys are in? And which college you have done your MBBS from? Or you are doing? Okay, let us let us begin right. Right, let us begin. So guys, here is the first spotter spotter. Murshida Abad Medical College, West Bengal. Great, great. So <clears throat> so guys, what will be the order of format? Okay. First you are going to identify the investigation that I'm showing. Okay, great, Jumna. Travancore Medical College. Great. So first you are going to identify the investigation. Okay. So you are going to identify the investigation. After that, uh, we are going to pick up some findings, pick, pick up some observations, right? And after that, we will try to come to a diagnosis. After that, we will try to come to a diagnosis. So guys, this is how you are going to answer in the entire class, right? Clear. So, शुरू करते हैं पहले स्पॉटर से फर्स्ट स्पॉटर स्पॉटर नंबर 1 गाइस व्हाट इज द इन्वेस्टिगेशन व्हाट इज द इन्वेस्टिगेशन दैट इज बीइंग शोन टू यू व्हाट इज द इन्वेस्टिगेशन शोन टू यू द इन्वेस्टिगेशन दैट इज बीइंग शोन टू यू इन दिस इमेजेस very good very good ultrasound image very good this is an ultrasound image so ultrasound image of what ultrasound image of what ultrasound image of what which part of of the body is the ultrasound being done which ultrasound is being done anyone so i will i will go slow but i would <coughs> I would like to get all the answers from you guys only. Okay. So ultrasound. Okay, ultrasound abdomen. Very good. Very good. So ultrasound abdomen. You are saying ultrasound abdomen. Great. So this is an ultrasound. Ultrasound of a pregnant female. Ultrasound. Ultrasound of a pregnant female. And 
ultrasound of the pregnant female you can you can see you can see a live fetus a live fetus within the within the uterus of the intrauterine live fetus can be seen intrauterine live fetus can be seen now guys what you have to do what you have to do you have to identify what is the abnormality that you can see within this fetus what is the abnormality that you can see within this fetus right tell me what is the abnormality that you can see within this fetus anyone what is the abnormality that you can see within this fetus myelomeningus heat okay very good try very good try so guys what we can see what we can see we can see a, a hyperechoic mass a hyperechoic mass within the sacrum okay hyperechoic mass just adjacent to the sacrum can be seen hyperechoic mass just just adjacent to the sacrum so many of you are seeing gastroschisis and emphalocele okay in gastroschisis and emphalocele you will see protrusion of the bubble loops this is the head of the fetus this is the abdomen so you will see the protrusion of the bubble loops through a defect in the anterior abdominal wall so this is not an, a defect in the anterior abdominal wall rather this is your lower limb this is your lower limb of the fetus this is your thigh and this is your leg of the fetus so this is this is not a this is not a emphalocele or a gastroschisis right so what we can see we can see a hyperechoic mass in the sacrum in the sacrum in the sacrum of the fetus so any guesses what this mass can be any sacrococcygeal mass that you are aware of any sacrococcygeal mass sacrococcygeal mass that you are aware of within a fetus anyone guys any sacrococcygeal mass that you are aware of and on fallow seal remember uh, and remember that myelomeningo seal okay you will see an equic an equic protrusion an equic protrusion because your uh, meningo seal it will be filled with csf it will be filled with csf so it will not be a hyperechoic mass it will not be a hyperechoic mass right so what are what are your findings what are your uh, uh, differential diagnosis for this case so let me just tell it for you so guys this was a case of sacro sacro coccygeal teratoma sacro coccygeal teratoma right sacro coccygeal teratoma so moving on to the next quarter moving on to the next quarter moving on to the next quarter guys tell me what is the investigation what is the investigation that you can see in this image what is the investigation okay and your observations and your observations investigations and your observations very good very good the uh, the investigation that is being shown to you this is a this is a x-ray of the pelvis as well as lateral view of the of the skull lateral view of the skull right so what are your observations in this case what are your observations in this case okay the patient presented with the patient the patient presented with bone pain the patient presented with bone pain right bone pain was the presentation of this patient okay along with anemia and a renal failure along with anemia and a renal failure tell me guys what is your differential diagnosis for this case what is your differential diagnosis for this case
anyone guys what are your observations what are your observations in this image guys we can see multiple multiple tiny lucencies within the pelvis within the pelvis then your head and neck of femur then also you can see punched out punched out lytic lesions punched out lytic lesions in the skull punched out lytic lesions in the skull okay so this is characteristically seen in characteristically seen in a patient with in a patient with multiple myeloma multiple myeloma okay multiple myeloma the patient presented with bone pain renal failure okay then your what is the crab criteria crab criteria hypercalcemia hypercalcemia renal failure anemia and bone pain bone pain right so guys you are going to find monoclonal gammopathy in this patient monoclonal gammopathy in this patient and you are going to find benz jones proteinuria benz jones proteinuria in these patients benz jones proteinuria in this patient okay so any other differential diagnosis for this case any other differential diagnosis for this case okay any other differential diagnosis for this case an important differential for the lytic lesions in this skull lytic lesions in this skull okay in a patient more than 40 years of age what are the tumors which are more common in patients with more than 40 years of age what are the tumors which are common in patients with 40 years of age anyone bone tumors which are common in patients with more than 40 years of age bone tumors which are common in patients bone tumors which are common in patients with more than 40 years of age anyone so there are three tumors that are common in more than 40 years of age that is your chondro sarcoma then you have your multiple multiple myeloma and the third is metastasis okay metastasis right no these tumors gct gct is present okay between 20 to 30 years of age G gct is present between <clears throat> 20 to 30 years of age right so metastasis metastasis is another very important differential for this case metastasis so guys how how you are uh, going to differentiate okay so if there are uh, lytic lesions within the vertebra remember lytic lesions within the vertebra your metastasis have a predilection have a predilection to involve your uh, pedicles more than the body they have a predilection to involve the pedicles of the vertebra more than the body and the second point is that metastasis is never going to involve your mandible is never going to involve your mandible right moving on to the third image moving on to the third image guys what are your observations in this case first of all tell me investigation 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 that is being shown to you in this case very good okay so this is this is an mri image mri image of the brain mri image of the brain very good dental cue mri image of the brain and what do you see on this mri image of the brain okay these are your images a b c and d okay you have to identify the sequences as well identify the sequence a which sequence is being shown in the image a which sequence is being shown to you in the image a very good akash which sequence is being shown to you in the image eh? i have labeled the images a b c and d a b c and d a b c and d image image a are you saying it is a t1 weighted image image a are you saying is a t1 weighted image 
So identify the sequences. Sequences. Sequence A, image A with sequences being shown to you in the image A. Image A. Very good dental view. Okay. So image A is image A is your image A is your image A is your T2 weighted image T2 weighted image why why it is a T2 weighted image because you can see that your circle spaces if you just have a look at the circle spaces okay these circle spaces have CSF within them and the CSF is appearing bright okay just have a look at the orbit have a look at the orbit okay so the vitreous vitreous humor looks looks vitreous humor looks bright on t2 weighted image that is why this is a this is a t2 weighted image image a is t2 weighted image very good okay and guys also have a look at the white matter the white matter is black the white matter is black on t2 weighted image okay white matter is black on t2 weighted image and in flare sequences okay this can be asked in your exam flare sequence how do you identify a flare sequence okay a flare sequence is not nothing it is but a t2 weighted image minus water minus water minus the signal of the water fluid attenuation inversion recovery sequence okay so the signal from the water it is suppressed in a flare image in a flare image okay so we can see we can see in flare image also in flare image also in flare image also you will see that the white matter will be black okay i want you to identify the white matter because you will get confused because in t1 weighted image also in t1 weighted image also this is a t1 weighted image why because the csf uh, csf is black but in player also csf will be with csf will be black but what is the difference the difference is that your white matter white matter will be white matter will be black okay white matter will be black on player image but if you if you see if you see a t1 weighted image the white matter will be white okay so just write it down in the comment section for me also okay how will the how will the white matter look on t1 weighted image on t2 weighted image and a flare image write it down in the comment section in the chat section how will how will the how will the white matter look on t2 weighted image on t2 weighted image t1 weighted image and a flare image write it down in the chat section then i will i will move forward this will be an interactive session right guys write it down in the comment section how will how will your white matter look on t1 weighted t2 weighted and flare image okay no dental cue that is what i am saying on t1 with a image what is black is black white is white okay white matter is white on t2 with image okay uh, okay there there is no black matter <laughs> okay dental cue there is no black matter uh, there is no, only gray matter so you cannot say that black is black you can say that gray is gray white is white on t1 and csf is black and what about flare image what is what about flare image what about flare image how will the black matter and your white matter look on a flare image <laughs> yeah that is better that is better 
so how will your white matter and your black matter look black matter look on a flare image come on guys come on i'm waiting waiting flare is important we are doing this exercise to get the right answers for the flare image we are doing this exercise to get the right right answers for the flare image so you can say that white matter is black white matter is black on csf uh, on flare images and your gray matter is it is brighter than your and gray matter is brighter than your white matter theek hai na very good is there, is everyone clear with this is everyone clear with this very basic thing theek hai just give me a thumbs up sequences hi aayenge yaar agar neat pg mein aapko koi question aayega the first sequence will be on uh, uh, the first question will be on sequence so this should be very clear very clear to us ठीक है देन टेल मी अबाउट दी अबाउट दी इमेज सी एन डी इमेज सी एन डी वॉट आर दीज इमेजेस वॉट आर दीज इमेजेस इमेज सी एन डी इमेज सी एन डी come on guys what is happening in the image c and d what are these images t1 weighted t2 weighted flare images what are these images c is t2 why do you say why do you say miracle begins c is a t2 weighted image why why is miracle begin c is a t2 weighted image is white matter black is white matter black do you see any bright csf bright csf that you are calling c as a t2 weighted image no problem no problem if you are given the wrong answer we are here to understand and dental q you have to give your reason also why do you call image c as a as a image c as a t1 weighted image okay your time is over now i will tell you guys so there is one more sequence that is your post contrast t1 weighted images post contrast t1 weighted images theek hai so dental q might have called this image as a t1 weighted image because the white matter was brighter than the gray matter but miracle begin might have called this image as a t2 weighted image because uh, he she might have seen this ventricles okay ventricles which have which have enhancing okay this is your choroid plexus enhancing choroid plexus bright choroid plexus okay bright choroid plexus is seen in is seen in post contrast t1 weighted images theek hai so post contrast t1 weighted images all the structures which have increased vascularity like your choroid plexus okay they will enhance a lot okay they will enhance a lot so that is why that is why okay in this image we can see that your choroid plexus if it is enhancing then we will call it as you will call, call it as post contrast t1 weighted image and post contrast images we are always using a t1 weighted sequence a t1 weighted sequence now guys tell me what are your observations in this case now tell me what are your observations in this case what are your observations in this case 
what are your observations in this case anyone Come on, guys. Can you see any abnormal thing? Can you see? Can you find any abnormality within this MRI images? Any abnormality? Cerebellum infarct. Why do you say there is a cerebellum infarct? How will a infarct look? How will a infarct look? Okay, acute infarct. Okay, acute infarct will be hypo intense. Hypo intense on T1 meter image. T1 meter damage, hypo intense, and hyper intense on hyper intense on T2 meter damage, T2 meter damage. Okay, so so Suyash Bagri, you are saying that there is, is a hyper intense region. In which sequence can you see that there is a hyper intense region? In which sequence you can see there is a hyper intense region? How is the region? How is the region looking on? T1 and T2 edited image. Tell me how is the legion looking on T1 and T2 edited image? How is the legion looking on T1 and T2 edited image? Not Holman Miller sign, not Holman Miller sign. <sighs> hypo intense, what hypo intense? Okay. So guys, now I will explain it to you. So guys, we can see that there is some hyper enhancing region. Okay, there is some region in the cerebellum that is enhancing a lot. This region is hyper enhancing, hyper enhancing. Okay, and this region is having a broad base towards the dura, broad base towards the dura. Okay, so if we just look at this image on t2 weighted image on t2 weighted image and on t1 weighted image we can say that the lesion is iso intense iso intense on t1 weighted images iso intense on t1 weighted images and iso intense on t2 weighted images right this is how the lesion is looking on t1 and t2 weighted images okay so are we clear that the legion is iso intense on t1 and t2 weighted images okay and it is enhancing a lot okay like your choroid plexus is enhancing in the post contrast images the same way your legion is enhancing and it is also giving this sign okay the dura along the legion is also enhancing this is what we call as dural tail sign dural tail sign dural tail sign and we can see that the legion is extra axial the legion is extra axial yes you will be fine in mbbs okay so i'm not asking you to make a diagnosis just try to understand the features now i have already told you that this is an extra axial legion giving a dural tail sign Okay, so what else we can see? What else we can see on this T2 weighted image? We can see that there is a there is a cleft of CSF, cleft of the CSF T2 hyper intense CSF cleft can be seen around the region. Okay, so this is known as CSF cleft sign. CSF cleft sign, dural tail sign can be seen in this in this image, right? Are we clear now? Are we clear now? that this is a case of meningioma this is a case of meningioma tell me if we are clear that 
meningioma okay great is everyone clear with the concept what is happening on the post contrast images what is happening on the t1 mirrored images what is happening on the t2 mirrored image is exact okay so just give me a thumbs up if we are clear with this concept okay now guys moving on to the okay so the patient presented with pain in the knee lack me might be due to mental issues theek hai so we will not worry about the lack just tell me what are your observations so guys in this image we can see in this image we can see that there is there is fragmentation there is fragmentation of the bone okay there is fragmentation of the bone fragmentation of the bone okay anterior to the tibia involving the tibial tuberosity okay this fragmentation of the bone involving the tibial tuberosity it is characteristically seen in it is characteristically seen in your osgood osgood Schlatter disease, Osgood Schlatter disease, right? It is characteristic is characteristically seen in your Osgood Schlatter disease, Osgood Schlatter disease, which is basically your osteochondritis of the osteochondritis of the tibial tuberosity, which is nothing but your osteochondritis of the tibial tuberosity, tibial tuberosity, right? now guys moving on to the next image moving on to the next image okay so this is basically basically there is osteochondritis of the tibial tuberosity you are going to find you are going to find uh, soft tissue swelling just anterior to the tibial tuberosity and you can also find you can al also find inflammation okay fluid collection in the infrapatellar bursa bursa it can also result in okay Uh, bursitis of the infra patellar bursa okay you can also see infra patellar bursitis in these patients infra patellar bursitis in these patients and this is what we call as this is what we call as clergyman's knee clergy clergyman's knee clergyman's knee clergyman's knee okay so in which you are going to find inferior beaking inferior beaking on the in the lower lower border of the patella in which you are going to find the inferior beaking in the lower border of the patella spotter number 5 spotter number 5 what are your observations in this spotter number 5 Come on, guys. What are your observations in this spotter number five? Sillout sign. Very good. Very good thought. Sillout sign. Okay. So that is a very good observation. So right heart border is not visualized. Right heart border is not visualized. Anything else that you can think of? Anything else, guys? Besides sillout sign. so guys in this image we can see a homogeneous opacity a homogeneous opacity in the in the right middle zone and 
right lower zone we can see a homogeneous opacity in the right middle zone and the right lower zone okay so there can be two possibilities for this homogeneous opacity there can be two possibilities for this homogeneous opacity okay so guys if this would have been a consolidation okay if this would have been a consolidation i will tell you that the lateral borders of the mass will not be so well defined if this would have been a consolidation the rate the lateral borders of the mass will not be so well defined okay so what is what is uh, this homogeneous opacity is doing this homogeneous opacity is having a broad base towards the mediastinum it is having a broad base towards the mediastinum right so there are two possibilities in this case either either it can be a mediastinal mass either it can be a mediastinal mass second second this case can be due to cardiomegaly cardiomegaly so what i wanted to teach you in this image what i wanted to teach you in this image is differentiate between cardiomegaly and mediastinal mass so any guesses what it can be whether this enlarged mass is due to cardiomegaly or it is due to mediastinal mass whether this enlarged homogeneous opacity okay in the right middle and lower zone it is due to cardiomegaly any guesses just write down what are your guesses whether it is due to cardiomegaly or whether it is due to mediastinal mass any guesses guys any guesses whether this uh, pathology is due to cardiomegaly or it is due to mediastinal mass any guesses so i'm waiting for your answers i'm waiting for your answers you have to guess something between cardiomegaly or mediastinal mass with a reason also mass okay sai charan is saying it is a mass so yes bagri is saying it is thymus okay anyone else okay never mind i will tell you so guys there is one sign in radiology there is one sign in radiology that can be asked in your neat pg exam okay that can be asked in your neat pg exam and the question will be like this okay hilum okay i will put this question like this hilum overlay sign hilum overlay sign is used to differentiate between is used to differentiate between cardiomegaly and cardiomegaly and so this is the answer okay it is used to differentiate between cardiomegaly versus medial channel mass so guys what is this hilum overlay sign what is this hilum overlay sign so this sign says that if there is some homogeneous opacity okay and hilar vessels hilar vessels can be seen through the mass or they are lying overlying the mass okay then we will say that it is due to a medial channel pathology okay but if the vessels are lying just adjacent to the mass they are lying adjacent to the mass they are not overlying the mass okay they are not overlying the opacity then we will call it as cardiomegaly because what will cardiomegaly do cardiomegaly it will shift the vessels it will shift the vessels laterally because vessels are entering into the heart okay it will shift the vessels laterally but a mediastinal mass will not do so okay a mediastinal mass are you clear with this concept a mediastinal mass will not will not shift the uh, vessels laterally okay so what will happen can you guys appreciate can you guys appreciate these are the vessels these are are the vessels that can be seen through the mass these are the vessels that can be seen through the mass that is why this was the case of this was the case of medial channel mass medial channel mass are we clear if we are clear just give me a thumbs up
Are we guys clear? Are we guys clear? Okay. Now guys, moving on to the next question. Moving on to the next question. First of all, identify the sequence. Identify the sequence. Identify the sequence in this image. This sequence has been shown to you. So this is an abnormal case. Which sequences guys is being shown to you? Anyone? Which sequence is being shown to you in this image? So the patient presented with the patient presented with guide abnormality, muscle rigidity, loss of vision, impaired swallowing. Okay, the patient presented with gait abnormality, gait abnormality. The patient presented with gait abnormality. See the patient presented with gait abnormality. Gait abnormality, loss of vision and impaired swallowing. Okay. Some of you are seeing T1 minute image. Okay. Some of you are seeing T1 minute image. Some of you are seeing it is a flare image. Okay. Any 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 reasons why you are seeing this? Why you are seeing that is it is a T1 minute image? Guys, have a look at the circle spaces. Have a look at the circle spaces. If you will look at the circle spaces you will see you will see that they are appearing bright okay the circle spaces are appearing bright don't have a look at the white matter because there is some white matter abnormality it is a demyelinating disease that is why your white matter is appearing bright okay because of the demyelination the white matter is appearing bright okay so white matter uh, your circle spaces are appearing bright that is why it, it is, is a, a T2 bullet image that is why it is it is a T2 bullet image right then guys what do we see what do we see there is hyper intensities hyper intensities in the periventricular white matter hyper intensities in the periventricular white matter and what else we can see just have a look at the appearance of subcortical u fibers subcortical u fibers are they looking black or white Subcortical U fibers are they looking black or white? Subcortical U fibers are they looking black or white? Anyone? Subcortical U fibers are they looking black or white? Come on, guys. Very good, editor. Very good. Okay. So, subcortical U fibers are having a normal appearance because they are appearing black. As I told you in T2 video image, your white matter it will look black it will look black so what is happening your uh, white matter is looking black or on t2 weighted image right so we can say we can say we can say guys that there is sparing of subcortical u fibers there is sparing of sparing of subcortical u fibers in these patients Okay, subcortical u fibers are spared in this patient right so guys this characteristic periventricular white matter hyperintensities with sparing of the subcortical u fibers this is characteristically seen in this is characteristically seen in metachromatic leukodystrophy metachromatic 
leukodystrophy and you can also see that there is uh, there is there is characteristic tigroid appearance there is characteristic tigroid appearance that you can see in metachromatic leukodystrophy characteristic tigroid appearance that you can see here right are we clear are we clear so guys talking about the other leukodystrophies let us talk about the other leukodystrophies as well okay and also tell me guys what is the enzyme deficiency what is the enzyme deficiency that you are going to see in metachromatic leukodystrophy enzyme deficiency that you are going to see in metachromatic leukodystrophy enzyme deficiency come on guys enzyme deficiency that you are going to see yes it is aryl sulfatase a sulfatase a deficiency that you are going to see aryl sulfatase a deficiency you are going to see in metachromatic leukodystrophy theek hai now guys let us talk about other leukodystrophies so guys what you are going to find in alexander disease what you are going to find in alexander disease anyone what you are going to find in alexander disease very good very good it has a frontal dominance frontal dominance okay you are going to see hyperintensity is in the frontal white matter hyperintensity is in the frontal white matter right alexander disease you are going to see hyperintensity is in the frontal white matter talking about x linked adre adrenal leukodystrophy x linked adrenal leukodystrophy what is the problem that you are going to find in x linked adrenal leukodystrophy anyone guys adrenal leukodystrophy x linked you are going to find parieto occipital predominance parieto occipital hyperindices parieto occipital predominance parieto occipital predominance talking about crab's disease crab's disease crab's disease come on guys characteristic findings that you are going to find in crab's disease and x linked adrenal leukodystrophy it is due to the accumulation of very long chain fatty acids due to accum accumulation of very long chain fatty acids and crab's disease crab's disease you are going to find you are going to find bilateral hyperdense thalamus bilateral hyper dense thalamus ठीक है दीज आर योर इम्पॉर्टेंट फीचर्स इन दी वेरियस लिक्विडिस्ट्रोफीज दैट यू गैस शुड बी अवेयर ऑफ ओके सो टेल मी द इन्वेस्टिगेशन द इन्वेस्टिगेशन दैट इज बींग शोन हेयर कमॉन गाइज वॉट इज द इन्वेस्टिगेशन दैट इज बींग शोन इन दिस इमेज very good very good this is a barium swallow image barium swallow image right okay so this is a barium swallow image now what is what kind of appearance are we getting what kind of appearance are we getting in barium swallow image what kind of appearance are we getting in barium swallow image what kind of appearance are we getting in barium swallow image very good very good we are getting a coarse crew appearance coarse crew appearance okay and this is characteristically seen in this is characteristically seen in this is characteristically seen in diffuse diffuse esophageal spasm it is characteristically seen in 
diffuse esophageal sagam right clear so tell me birds beak appearance birds beak appearance is seen in birds beak appearance is seen in birds beak appearance is seen in very good okay birds beak appearance it is seen in your it is seen in your aclesia cardia aclesia cardia okay very good now guys moving on to the next image moving on to the next image what is the investigation what is the investigation what is the investigation that is being shown here anyone guys very good this is a chest x-ray very good this is a chest x-ray what are we seeing on this chest x-ray what are we seeing on this chest x-ray come on guys what are your observations in this chest x-ray what are your observation in this chest x-ray very good very good okay so there is some opacity there is some opacity in the left lower zone very good very good suggest energy okay trachea is shifted no trachea is not shifted trachea is there in its normal position trachea is there in its normal position so this is a tough x-ray this is a tough tough x-ray okay so guys we can see what we can see in this image we can see in this image, image that, that there is some in this image we can see that in this image we can see that there is some air fluid levels air fluid levels okay in the retrocardic region air fluid levels in the air fluid levels in the retrocardic region right air fluid levels in the retrocardic region okay so guys this air fluid levels it is due to the it is due to the stomach build being pulled up okay stomach being pulled up in the mediastinum so what was happening stomach was pulled up in the mediastinum and it was having air fluid levels so can you tell me what is your diagnosis stomach is pulled up into the mediastinum what is your diagnosis for this case this was a case of come on guys what will you call it stomach has herniated into the mediastinum this is a case of hiatus hernia hiatus hernia okay so just remember guys hiatus hernia this is a characteristic spotter very good suresh bagri this is a characteristic case where you will see okay where you will see herniation herniation of the stomach into the mediastinum into the mediastinum okay guys now tell me now tell me what is the classification what are the various types what are the various types along with uh, what are the various types you are going to see in hiatus hernia what are the various types you are going to see in hiatus hernia okay anyone so in type 1 in type 1 type 1 is just sliding hernia type 1 is sliding hernia okay type 2 is 
पैरा इसोफेजल हर्निया पैरा इसोफेजल हर्निया पैरा इसोफेजल हर्निया विद जी जंक्शन जी जंक्शन एट इट्स नॉर्मल लोकेशन विद जी जंक्शन एट इट्स नॉर्मल लोकेशन ठीक है एट इट्स नॉर्मल पोजीशन ठीक है देन देयर इज पैरा इसोफेजल हर्निया मिक्स्ड और कंपाउंड टाइप ओके हाइट मिक्स्ड और कंपाउंड टाइप पैरा इसोफेजल हर्निया विद डिस्प्लेस्ड जी जंक्शन विद डिस्प्लेस्ड जी जंक्शन ठीक है ना एंड इन टाइप 4 गाइस ओके टाइप 4 दिस टाइप 3 इज मिक्स्ड in which you are going to see sliding as well as mixed hernia in type c in type c you are going to see herniation of the herniation of the viscera as well herniation of viscera as well herniation of viscera as well clear clear now guys write it down in the chat section for me what is the characteristic finding that you are going to get you you are going to get in the you are going to get in the uh hiatal hernia characteristic finding that you are going to get in hiatal hernia so come on guys write it down in the comment section for me so this is how you are going to remember it for a longer period of time this is how you are going to remember it for a longer period of time come on guys what is your characteristic finding that you are going to get in hiatal hernia you are not writing down air fluid level everyone everyone should write it down everyone should write it down air fluid level where you are going to get this air fluid level where are you going, going to get, get this air fluid, fluid level, level? just 1% one one is writing down just 1% one one is writing down So this way you are going to forget the things. This way you are going to forget the things. So guys, we are seeing air fluid levels. We are going to see. We are going to see air fluid levels in the retrocardiac region. Retrocardiac region. ठीक है? Air fluid levels in the retrocardiac region. Very good, Nareesh editor. ठीक है? So the patient had history of history of uh, weight loss. Weight loss. okay and uh, there was there was history of fever also in this patient okay so first of all tell me what is the investigation what is the investigation that is being shown here investigation that is being shown here Come on, guys. What is the investigation that is being shown here? Barium anema. Anyone else? Anyone else? So, guys, this is a this is a barium meal follow through image. Okay, this is a barium meal follow through image. Okay, because. because you are seeing you are seeing your small bubble loops also you are seeing large bubble loops also okay now guys tell me what are your observations what are your observations in this case what is the observations in this case this is a barium meal follow through image what are your observations in this case No, this is not apple core colon. This is not apple core colon. What are your observations in this case? Very good, very good. This is one of the findings. Your terminal ileum. Okay, there is, there is narrowing in the terminal ileum. Narrowing in the 
terminal ilm there is narrowing in the terminal ilm what else can you see in this image yes this is string sign this is called as string sign string sign because of the narrowing in the terminal ilm what is your second observation second observation what are your other observations let us first have a look at the observations amazing suresh bagali bagali Ama amazing answer okay so you can see that the cecum is pulled up cecum is pulled up okay pulled up, pulled up cecum can be seen in this case amazing observation hats off to you okay and you can see that your iliocecal angle iliocecal angle it is increased okay iliocecal angle is increased so guys string sign of canter okay along with pulled up cecum all these are features of all these are features of iliocecal tb okay all these are important features of iliocecal tb iliocecal tuberculosis okay and this increase in the iliocecal angle it is known as it is known as goose neck deformity goose neck deformity okay now guys tell me okay what is turn in sign what is turn in sign turn in sign anyone guys what is turn in sign what, what is turn in sign Sterling sign in iliocecal TB is Okay, there is rapid emptying of the involved bubble loop. Okay, in Sterling sign, there is rapid emptying, rapid emptying of the involved bubble loop, rapid emptying of the involved bubble loop. Okay. So rapid emptying of the involved bubble loop is seen in Sterling sign. Very good. Okay. So. Now guys moving on to the moving on to the next spotter moving on to the next spotter what are your observations in this case what are your observations in this case okay first of all tell me what is the investigation what is the investigation? What are your observations in this case? Anyone? Come on guys, tell me what are your observations in this case? You guys are getting tired. You guys are getting tired. You have to push yourself. You have to see. Okay, first of all, tell me a simple question. What is your observation in this case? Observation kya is case. Investigation to Badao, can you see? Investigation to Badao, simple question. Tell me the investigation. Tell me the investigation in this case. So, guys, this is a this is a contrast enhanced CT image. 
ओके कॉन्ट्रास्ट एन आर सी टी इमेज ऑफ दिन बहुत ही बड़ी आंसर तनमय गुप्ता बहुत ही बड़ी आंसर दिस इज अ कॉन्ट्रास्ट एन आर सी टी इमेज ऑफ दिन ओके वॉट वी कैन सी वॉट वी कैन सी दैट देर आर एब नॉर्मल बबल रूप सीन इन दी इन दी लेफ्ट लेफ्ट साइड ऑफ द बैक ओके दिस इज योर बैक एंड यू कैन सी बबल लूप्स आर सीन हर्नीटिंग थ्रू दी बबल लूप्स आर सीन इन दी सब क्यूटिनियस फैट ओके दिस इज नॉट डॉर्थल यू कैन कॉल इट एज लंबर हर्निया लंबर हर्निया लंबर हर्निया ठीक है बबल लूप्स आर सीन इन दी सब क्यूटिनियस टिश्यू ओके दिस इज योर एरिया ऑफ द लंबर हर्निया सो दिस दिस स्पेस इट इज लाइंग बिटवीन दी बिटवीन दी एक्सटर्नल ऑफ लीक मसल your latissimus dorsi muscle and inferiorly you have the iliac crest okay between this space there is herniation herniation of the bubble loops herniation of the bubble loops okay now guys tell me uh now guys tell me which investigation which investigation Which investigation is being shown to you in the image B? Which investigation is being shown to you in the image B? Very good. This is a CT image of the pelvis. CT image of the pelvis. Okay. What do you see in this CT image of the pelvis? What do you see in this CT image of the pelvis? बहुत ही अच्छे आरिशोय. What else? Anyone else who would like to answer? Anyone else who would like to answer? Anyone else who would like to make any observations? What are you able to see? What are you able to see on the X-ray of the pelvis? X-ray of the pelvis, and your CT images, and your CT images. No one, guys. No one. No one would like to make any guess. So guys, in this image we can see that air is seen. Air is seen within the wall of the wall of the bladder. Okay, in this image we can see that there is air in the wall of the urinary bladder. Air in the wall of the urinary bladder. So guys, this is a case of this is a case of air in the wall of the urinary bladder. This is a case of come on guys. Air in wall of urinary bladder is a case of. Any diagnosis, guys? You can see air, foci of air within the wall of the urinary bladder. Come on, guys! Come on, guys! What, what is your diagnosis? diagnosis? What, what What is your diagnosis, diagnosis in this case? Yes. Air in the wall of the urinary bladder. Come on, think. So, guys, this is a case of this is a case of emphysematous cystitis. Emphysematous. cystitis okay and what is the most common organism most common organism responsible for most common organism responsible for 
फाइसीमेटिस सिस्टाइटिस इट इज योर स्टेरिशिया कोलाय स्टेरिशिया कोलाय राइट राइट मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट इमेज मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट इमेज Guys, what are your observations in this X-ray? What are your observations in this X-ray? What are you able to see? Okay, what are you able to see in this X-ray? Come on, guys. so guys there is there is a mnemonic for this kind of joint that is uh, there is a mnemonic for this kind of joint that is your 6 d's 6 d's so you should remember the 6 d's that are seen in the charcot's joint the 6 d's in the charcot's joint are the 6 d's in the charcot's joint are there is there is uh, decrease in the density there is decrease in the density okay then there is destruction destruction of the joint like like we can see that there is destruction of the second metatarsal in this case then you are going to find debris that is your loose bodies loose bodies will be seen you can see few loose bodies loose bodies in this image okay then there will be distension of the joint distension of the joint distension is basically your joint effusion joint effusion okay and you are going to find disorganization disorganization and dislocation within the joint okay disorganization and dislocation within within the joint okay so remember the six d's that you are going to see that you are going to see in a case with in a case with uh, charcot's joint right and guys remember the most common causes are your the most common causes are your diabetes mellitus then seringo seringomyelia seringomyelia neurosyphilis neurosyphilis okay traumatic spinal cord injury these are the most common causes for your charcot's joint okay so you are going to find decrease in the density destruction of the joint debris distension of the joint disorganization and dislocation in the joint in a case with charcot's joint charcot's joint okay identify the investigation identify the investigation in this case Come on, guys. Which investigation is being shown to you in this image? Which investigation is being shown to you in this image? Okay. Very good. This is a CT image. Okay. CT image of the PNS. CT image of the PNS. ठीक है. And what do you see in this CT image of the PNS? What do you see in this CT image of the PNS?
what can you see what are your observations what are your observations in this ct image of the pns what are your observations anyone what are your observations very good than me very good than me we can see we can see that there is some some soft tissue contents soft tissue contents can be seen in bilateral maxillary sinus soft tissue contents can be seen in bilateral maxillary sinus okay so guys this was a case of this was a case of this was a case of anyone sinusitis okay maxillary sinusitis besides that besides that any other observation any other observation besides soft tissue contents besides soft tissue contents anything else that you can see in this image besides soft tissue contents besides soft tissue contents any other thing that you can see in this image So air is a normal thing within the sinus. Air is a normal thing within the sinus. Okay, guys, you can see, you can see that there are there are hyperdense contents, hyperdense contents, hyperdense contents in the right maxillary sinus. You can see hyperdense contents in the right maxillary sinus right so hyperdense contents in the right maxillary sinus there are three uh, two very important differences that is your fungal sinusitis fungal sin sinusitis and the other is your inspissated uh, secretion inspissated secretions okay so this was a case of yes hematoma also you can have hyperdense contents so this was a case of fungal sinusitis fungal sinusitis ठीक है फंगल सेनेसाइटिस अनदर गुड केस फॉर यू अनदर गुड केस फॉर यू लेट अस सी हु इज एबल टू आइडेंटिफाई लेट अस सी हु इज एबल टू आइडेंटिफाई Okay, great, great. This is an MRI image. This is an MRI image. Okay, of the ankle, an MRI image of the ankle. Okay. So what I'm trying to show in this MRI image. Okay. What is the location of this? What is the location of the lesion? What is the location of this of the lesion? Location of the lesion in this case. Tell me, guys, what is the location of the lesion? Talonavicular joint, no, no. Anything more obvious than that? Anything more obvious than that? 
okay anything more obvious than that what is the location of the lesion very good very good shoye bayu very good shoye bayu dharma gupta you are absolutely right the lesion is located within the calcaneum so only lesion only lesion that you know of within the calcaneum is only lesion that you know of within the calcaneum is only lesion that you know of within the calcaneum is plantar fasciitis is not within the calcaneum hi charan okay very good osteochondritis anything else lesion osteonecrosis okay okay good that is sebers disease besides osteonecrosis anything else anything else what is the characteristic of this lesion what is the characteristic of this lesion okay what is the characteristic of this lesion it is a well defined lesion well defined lesion hyper intense on t1 with images hyper intense on t1 with images okay and if you if you look at this lesion okay on fat suppressed images the lesion is showing fat suppression okay on fat suppressed images the lesion is showing fat suppression okay so this is your this is your this is a case of intraosseous lipoma intraosseous lipoma right intraosseous lipoma now guys try to identify this case what is the investigation that is being shown to you come on guys what is the investigation that is being shown to you very good tanmay gupta very good tanmay gupta the investigation that is being shown to you it is your it is your mrcp image mrcp image what is the probability that you are seeing in this mrcp image what is the probability that you are seeing Uh, in this MR, MRCP image, come on, guys. What is the abnormality that you are seeing here? Phrygian cap. Okay, that is normally present. Phrygian cap is normally present, so that is not an abnormal thing. Anything else? So very well pointed out by Doctor Doctor Shoaib Ayu Shoaib Ayubi Shoaib Ayubi. Okay. so guys it results from the failure it results from the failure of the it results this is basically this is a case of where there is failure of the fusion of failure of fusion of dorsal and pancreatic failure of fusion of dorsal and ventral pancreatic duct theek hai na ventral pancreatic duct and you can see that your cbd okay cbd and your pancreatic duct they are draining separately okay there is no connection between the dorsal and the ventral pancreatic duct and because of which this is this is a case of this is a case of 
pancreatic defism pancreatic defism and in this case in this case what happens your main pancreatic duct okay that is your dorsal duct that is your dorsal duct duct of virsum it is draining into the minor papilla it is draining into the minor papilla and when this uh, main pancreatic duct it is draining into the minor papilla okay it these patients can present with these patients can present with recurrent episodes of pancreatitis these patients can present with okay present with recurrent episodes of okay recurrent episodes of recurrent episodes of pancreatitis pancreatitis theek hai clear are you guys clear normally what happens normally what happens in a mrcp image you can see that that your common bile duct common common bile duct it is fusing with the main pancreatic duct common bile duct it is fusing with the main pancreatic duct and draining into the major papilla but here what is happening your common bile duct and your common bile duct and your pancreatic duct they are draining separately they are draining separately right that is why this is the case of this is the case of pancreatic defism pancreatic defism right now guys moving on to the next image what do you see what do you see come on guys what is your observation very good very good we are seeing alternating radio lucent and radio dense metaphyseal line radio lucent alternating metaphyseal lines theek hai so guys this is characteristically seen in this is characteristically seen in characteristically seen in i will tell you one mnemonic that you can remember So the mnemonic is dense lines, dense lines, ठीक है, dense lines, dense lines, ठीक है. So you can remember this mnemonic. So D stands for D stands for vitamin D intoxication. Okay, vitamin D intoxication. E stands for elemental elemental toxicity elemental toxicity due to heavy metals like your lead arsenic like your lead arsenic theek hai so s stands for s stands for systemic illness systemic illness e for estrogen therapy estrogen therapy during pregnancy theek l for leukemia leukemia lymphoma I for infection and for never forget healed rickets. Never forget healed rickets. Never forget healed rickets. E for early hypothyroidism. Early hypothyroidism and S for scurvy. S for scurvy. So this is the mnemonic for dense lines. Okay. So let us repeat it again. Let us repeat it again. D for vitamin D intoxication, vitamin D of intoxication. E for elemental, elemental toxicity. Like your lead poisoning. Uh, S for systemic illness. E for estrogen therapy during pregnancy. L for leukemia. I for infection, like your, like your torch infections. Okay. n for never forget uh, never forget e for e for early hypothyroidism e for early hypothyroidism s for scurvy s for scurvy theek hai clear guys clear
just give me a thumbs up if it is clear if you have remembered the mnemonic if you have learned the mnemonic just give me a thumbs up we can move ahead Okay, great, great. Now, guys, let me so let me know what are your observations. What are your observations in this X-ray? What are your observations in this X-ray? What are your observations in this X-ray? Where are the arrows pointing towards? Where are the arrows pointing towards? Where are the arrows pointing towards? This is not spondylolysis. This is not spondylolysis. This is an x ray of a two year old boy presented with corneal opacification. Corneal opacification. Corneal opacification lymphadenopathy. Two year old boy. very good you are very near you are very near dr lena singh and dr shoaib ayubi you guys are very near you guys are very near but this is not the right answer no this is not bullet nose vertebra this is not bullet nose vertebra So guys in this image we can see in this image I told you that the patient presented with corneal opacity the patient presented with corneal opacity okay so hunter disease mein there is cornea is not affected in hunter disease cornea is not affected so just remember that a hunter requires eyes to hunt okay so that is why cornea is sparing hoti hai. that is the mnemonic that we should uh, that we used to remember during our preparation so in this image there is characteristic central beaking in the vertebra central beaking in the vertebra so guys this central beaking in the vertebra it is characteristically seen in your it is characteristically seen in your moriquous disease moriquous disease right central beaking in the vertebra is characteristically seen in moriquous disease moriquous disease okay now guys this is a chest x-ray chest x-ray of a patient chest x-ray of a patient what is this chest x-ray showing what is this chest x-ray showing what is this chest x-ray showing come on guys let us see let us see this is a very tough x-ray let us see who is able to identify no you can say there is mild straightening but this is not the right answer not the right answer this is not the answer that i was looking for this is not the answer that i was looking for what else can you see in this image guys <clears throat> no this is this is just this is just prominent aortic knuckle this is just prominent aortic knuckle nothing else prominent aortic knuckle can be seen <clears throat> okay lymphadenopathy no there is no lymphadenopathy no lymphadenopathy no lymphadenopathy 
you can see the right hilum right right hilum is normal right hilum is normal right hilum is normal what else what else what else why by what no not barrel chip just nahi anything else anything else that you can think of in this chest x ray can you see the left hilum can you see the left hilum can you see the left hilum how many of you guys can see the left hilum left lung is hyper intense no event ration event ration event ration we will call event ration when one dome of diaphragm is quite higher okay quite higher than the other diaphragm and then the other other side okay there is no no event ration okay no event ration no aneurysm in this case aorta looks normal aorta looks normal can you guys appreciate the left hilum can you guys appreciate the left hilum are yaar shastri katiyar kya answer diya aapne bahut tagda answer okay so you deserve a treat from me for this amazing answer for this amazing answer amazing theek hai so why do you call it left lower lobe collapse why do you call it left lower lobe collapse why do you call it left lower lobe collapse anyone why do you call it a left lower lobe collapse क्या बात है यार बहुत ही बढ़िया आंसर आई थिंक यू मस्ट हैव यू मस्ट हैव सीन माय प्रीवियस क्लासेस आल्सो सो गाइस नॉर्मली नॉर्मली लेफ्ट हाइलम इज हायर देन द राइट हाइलम नॉर्मली लेफ्ट हाइलम इज हायर देन द राइट हाइलम लेफ्ट हाइलम इज हायर देन द राइट हाइलम इन दिस केस व्हाट वी कैन सी लेफ्ट हाइलम इज नॉट विजुलाइज एंड देयर इज सम होमोजीनियस ओपेसिटी इन द रेट्रोकार्डिक एरिया देयर इज सम होमोजीनियस ओपेसिटी इन द रेट्रोकार्डिक एरिया तो जरूरी नहीं है ट्रिकिया पुल्ड होगा इट्स नॉट नेसेसरी दैट द ट्रिकिया शुड बी पुल्ड ठीक है ना हाइलम आपका पुल्ड हो गया ना नीचे को एंड देयर इज सम होमोजीनियस समोपैसिटी इन द लेफ्ट लोअर जोन होमोजीनियस समोपैसिटी इन द लेफ्ट लोअर जोन ओके सो दिस वाज अ केस ऑफ दिस वाज अ केस ऑफ लेफ्ट लोअर लोब को लेफ्ट लोअर लोब को राइट बहुत ही गुड बहुत ही अच्छा आंसर डॉक्टर शास्त्री चलो अब इस केस का बताइए इस केस का बताइए व्हाट डू यू सी इन दिस केस गाइस व्हाट डू यू सी इन दिस केस come on guys what is your observation for this case tell me what is the investigation so hypotense is the term that you, that we will use for mri this is not we are going to use for ct images okay this is not a term that we are going to use for ct images okay hypotense lesions in the liver so let me tell you that these these hypotense lesions no problem 
okay so someone else also used hypotenuse word in the x ray okay so these are not hypotenuse lesions these are not hypo uh, these are not hypotenuse lesions but this is this is dilatation of the are you calling this as hypotenuse lesions okay these are this is dilatation dilatation of the intrahepatic biliary radicals dilatation of the intrahepatic biliary radicals clear this is dilatation of the intrahepatic biliary radical theek hai now guys tell me now guys tell me what are the other observations theek hai if you are confusing it with cystic lesions very good you pointed out this thing okay this is nothing but this is intrahepatic biliary radical dilatation what else can you see in this image come on guys what are the other observations that you can make pancreas okay besides pancreatic swollen okay pancreas appear normal okay they are normal in <coughs> normal in uh, size okay pancreas is normal in size pancreas are not swollen if you are thinking in terms of pancreatitis what else where is this arrow pointing towards where is this arrow pointing towards Come on, guys. Where is this arrow pointing towards? Yellow arrow. No one is replying. So this is nothing. This is but your dilated pancreatic duct. Dilated pancreatic duct. Dilated pancreatic duct. Right. So I have told you two important observations. One is intrahepatic biliary radical dilatation. Second is your pancreatic. duct dilatation now can you tell me what can be the cause for pancreatic duct dilatation and dilatation of the intrahepatic biliary radicals can you tell me what can be the cause for both of these things stone at ampulla okay stone at ampulla that can be a cause that can be a cause okay but it is very rare that a stone in the common bile duct it will result in pancreatic duct dilatation this is not you are going to see carolis disease pancreatic duct will not be dilated in carolis disease So yes, bagri, bagri, bagri. What else? What else can be the possibility? What else can be the possibility? Come on, guys. So guys, this was a case of this, this was, was a case, case of, of this, this was, was a case, case of periampullary carcinoma. Periampullary carcinoma. This was a case of 
this was the case of peri ampullary carcinoma peri ampullary carcinoma okay so this peri ampullary carcinoma this resulted in dilatation of the intrahepatic biliary radicals dilatation of the this was the cbt dilatation of the cbt then you had the dilatation of the common uh, main pancreatic duct um, bile duct okay and you had dilatation of the intrahepatic biliary radicals biliary radicals so that was the case of that was the case of what that was the case of peri ampullary carcinoma are we clear with it are we clear with it okay now moving on to the next next quarter come on guys what do we see in this image what do we see in this image anyone Playing from desktop eight week three f fifty four. Very, very good, very good, very good. Okay, so guys, this was the case of this was the case of Holman Miller disease. Okay, this was the case of Holman Miller disease, right? very good this was a case of uh, intensely enhancing lesion you can see uh, intensely enhancing lesion you can see uh, intensely enhancing lesion take a intensely enhancing lesion in the in the region of temporal fossa pterygoid fossa and that is originating from the that is originating from the sphenopalatine foramina okay that was originating from the sphenopalatine foramina right so let's hold on let's hold on so guys in this image we can see in this image we can <coughs> we can see that there is a avidly avidly enhancing lesion avidly enhancing lesion in the region of sphenopalatine foramina and it was extending through the pterygo maxillary fissure into the infratemporal fossa okay and it was also bulging on the bulging onto the right maxillary sinus resulting in holman miller sign this was a case of juvenile 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 Naso and your fibroma, juvenile naso and your fibroma, right? Now this is the last case. This is the last case that I'm going to discuss. Okay, and you have to tell me what are your observations in this in this case? What are your observations in this case? Anyone, guys? What are your observations in this case? what are your observation in this case anyone guys but which image is tell me what is the investigation what is the investigation that is being shown to you investigation that is being shown to you come on guys which investigation is being shown to you in this image which investigation is being shown to you in this image
Very good. This is the NCC team image of which part, which part is being shown to you, which part is being shown to you, which part is being shown to you. very good very good okay this is a ct image of the neck this is a ct image of the neck ct image of the neck very good you can ct image of the neck hey this is an nct image of the neck what is being shown here what is being shown here what is being shown here in this nct image what is this structure what is this structure what is this structure guys this is your laryngeal cavity this is your laryngeal cavity and this is the thyroid cartilage okay this is the thyroid cartilage okay this is your vertebra what is this structure that is being shown here what is this structure what is this structure that is being shown here only one guys what is this structure that is being shown here in this image esophagus esophagus very good very good what are you seeing within the esophagus what are you seeing within the esophagus bahut hi acche tan mein gupta bahut hi acche okay so guys this was a case of this was a case of foreign body ingestion this was a case of foreign body ingestion bahut hi acche guys so guys how did you find how did you find this potter session today any any feedbacks any feedback did you enjoy the session today did you learn did you see new x-rays did you see new x-rays today that you had not seen earlier hmm how did you find the session today guys anyone great it so guys uh, let me tell you few things few things about the an academy plus platform before we leave okay so guys we have this plus subscription so in which we have both the live and the recorded lectures okay so such classes that i have taken on the on the youtube live platform these classes are also i will i'm also taking on the an academy plus platform okay so we have this iconic subscription available in which you can uh, have both the subscription of the an academy as well as prep ladder okay so this is a very useful um, useful uh, subscription that will help you get uh, a good rank in your neat pg preparation right then we then guys we have a lot of special class features that are available that is you can directly raise your hand interact and interact with your teachers okay uh, like in mcq session we have we are conducting various polls and uh, even the notes are also available the notes are also available so guys we have various patches coming up for the fmg students okay so in which you you are uh, going to be taught by many great teachers like nikita nanwani ma'am deepak deepak gulyani sir okay then then okay we have a batch that is coming up for the uh, next 2023 okay subject wise batch again you are uh, there are so many great teachers like your janvi bajaj ma'am soman manna sir priyanka sachdev ma'am okay so don't miss out in enrolling for this classes and going for the for the 
going for the batch courses right that will definitely boost your preparation and uh, you can also okay use my code my code is himanshu mamsi okay that you can go that you can use to get an extra extra 10 percent discount okay so guys this was all for today i hope i did justice to you bye bye take care guys keep working hard all the best